Uh, so, uh, anything else you wanted to add to, to the intro before we get into actual stuff? Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to talk about the pillars of fundamentals. <laughs> uh, these are kind of the things that hold up the fundamentals. Um, and oftentimes they're not really talked about as individual skills themselves. Um, but I, I like to think of them as um, as actual skills that need training them themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything kind of blends into everything else in this game. Kind of makes it hard to talk about, but you know, we got it nice and laid out for you. Because that's one thing that makes it one of the things that makes it really hard to improve is that it's like everything's covered by a blanket, and you know, trying to increase it, you know, an individual skill. It may not look like it is, but you got to raise the whole blanket over time, you know? Alright. All right. So, I think that's long enough. Yeah, so anyways, as you can see, we've got um, three different pillars. Um, and, I, you know, I think competency is required in all three aspects to be good. You don't need to be, like, the best at, at, at them all, but you have to be able to, you have, you have, you have to be able to use them. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, so like the first one is execution. That's based like at the core of it. That's just being able to control your character. Yeah. Uh, hey, yes. bird eat man next to the bird ball. Man, next to the ball. Yeah. So execution, basically moving your character. So you know that's like back dashing, forward dashing, side stepping, attacking. Yeah. Um, doing combos. You know, all the stuff that requires. Um, Requires you to do inputs. This is, I, I'd probably say, this is like the base of the pyramid, you know, because of these three. Because if you can't do what you want your character to do, the knowledge and decision making doesn't really amount to much, you know. If I can't even, if I know, hey, I can duck that, but then you don't duck that, the knowledge, pretty, you know, you have to use the knowledge to acquire the execution, you know. Um. Yeah, so like really high levels of execution aren't required to get good, but they definitely help, especially in the movement aspects of things. Mm -hmm. um, but you do need to be able to get your character to do what you want it to um, most of the time. Yeah, so that's that's the first one. The next one is knowledge. You have to know what to do in order to do it. Um, yeah, so you have to know what your character can do and what your opponent can do. You got to know your attacks, your pokes, uh, your movement options, punishers, punishers, combos, um, things like that. And then your weird situational moves, like a punch parry or a crush move, is come in handy to know. So the more the more you know about um, every possible situation, the better your decision making will end up being. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah. Um, yeah, so if you know what all your options are, um, because every character has tools to deal with every situation. Um, some characters have better tools in certain situations than others. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everyone can at least block everything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, everyone can block, everyone can low parry. So um, so if you, if you have the knowledge of what your options are, that means and deal with the situation that you're unfamiliar with better, um, just because you know what your options are and how they how they fit into the grand scheme of things. Um, but also knowing all of your options um, will help you limit uh, your opponent's option. Um, because if uh, if you know you can hop kick a low, um, that means the uh, if, if they try to use a low. And yeah. uh, you'll jump over it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's that's one of the things where knowing your options will... Yeah, and knowing your opponent's options, you may be you might be behaving in a way that loses only to an opponent's low, and then you know I can I can limit his options to that low and then beat that low with a launcher. Yeah, so uh, Asa brought up the uh, the old old school method of learning. Get your ass beat over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a guy hit me up the other day at a game works and he said, hey, yeah, hey thanks for the follow. Red man one X, X red man one X. X red man one. 
he said, uh, hey, I'd like to get some games in, but try not to completely demolish me. And I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to beat you up because that's how you get better. And he said, okay. I said, hey, it worked for me, you know, so that's, that's the old school way. Yeah, but when you're beating them up, where you get at least telling them stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm not just like secretly hiding uh, stuff. You know, playing with experienced players, that's basically how you got good until today. We're revolutionizing the Tekken world here. Uh, why doesn't beat BB emotes work here? I have no idea. Who? I don't know what BT emotes are. Back turn? <laughs> so back, turn back turn TV. Look at the back of your TV. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, the problem with the uh, getting your ass beat over and over again until you get good method is that it discourages a lot of players. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, one, it takes a while. It discourages a lot of players. You'll, you will, you'll, you have that a really big issue of not knowing whether you're getting better or not because you, even though you may be closing the gap, if the gap is ginormous. Uh, you may not be feeling it. And then uh, sometimes experienced players suck at giving advice. Yeah. So there, so you may not even be getting that, that much advice from them. Right. But I will say getting beat up a lot is definitely an important part of the learning process. Hmm. Um, because that's one of the ways where you work on, uh, um, on the next thing, decision making. Like yeah. One of the only ways to really uh, practice decision making is to is to get you put yourself in situations where you have to make these decisions. Um, yeah, so nice segue. See what I did there? I saw what you did there. It was incredible. Uh, but yeah, so uh, decision making. Uh, it's probably one of the hardest hardest things to train uh, because it's really hard to tell what is a good decision and what's yeah. a bad decision. Um, especially if a good decision doesn't necessarily lead to like a big damage combo or yeah. something like that. And it, what what could be considered a good decision changes from instance to instance, character to character, player to player. Something might be a great decision against me, but a terrible decision against someone else just because of the play style. And then even if you, you know, just the, how how I'm currently playing, something might be a terrible decision. If I'm if I'm trying to keep you out, that may affect how some decisions are good and bad. But if I'm turtling, it might totally swap the dynamic of what's good and what's bad, or what worked and what didn't. So I mean, there's no there's no clear way of telling if something is a good decision. If it hit them, I mean, not not before the results are known. Really, there isn't, but. Uh, that's basically your only uh, indicator of whether something was a unless it was unless it's launch punishable on hit. If it hit them, it's probably a good decision. Right, but anyway, so um, in general, what um, here's what makes a good a good a good decision. Um, but like, like I said, what goes into you know crafting an idea that is a good decision right end up being good all right so one of the most important things about a good decision is you make it in time to act accordingly mm -hmm. so if you uh you know if you remembered uh those casuals last week that you should have punished that one move that killed you or that one move that uh, right before you died you know that was not in time mm -hmm. um you had the knowledge eventually uh, and you could probably do it because the execution wouldn't have been that difficult, but you didn't make the decision in time. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, you you decided to block and punish because that that comes with blocking basically, but you uh, didn't. Ex you didn't decide to execute it in time. You know, what I mean. Right, and uh, and that comes down to also you know, being able to do uh, react quickly enough. So, mm -hmm. in game, you have to be able to decide what the right punish is quickly. Um, sometimes. Was have weird punishes like they recover crouch, so you can't do your your high punisher. Hmm. Or, they, or they push back, and you have to do a very specific punish. Where you know, you, like you you got to do a 14 frame long range punish. It's like it's not just 14 frames because jabs will whip. It's got to be, you know, back three or whatever a long range 14 frame punish, which comes from knowing your character. Um, yeah. So also the. Um, Make, making a good decision that utilizes your options. Um, 
that means like you, you know, you've got your got your options to um, um, should have <laughs> yeah, should have put more into outline. On this. <laughs> more in the outline, yeah. Um, well, I mean, uh, as far as using options like offensively, that that you're also also simultaneously like limiting your opponent's options is like I know a good option for fighting Huarong is to crouch punch him a lot, and basically you can boil down all of Huarong's moves into moves that beat dick punch, or and moves that don't, and you can find out how to beat the moves that do beat it, force them into a behavior, and then learn how to counter that behavior. So. Crouch punching a lot might seem like a bad decision when he double jump, flip kicks you and launches you, but you, your, your overall decision is correct in forcing him into a move that you can, in this instance, sidestep and launch punish. So, you know, good decision, bad decision, options, limiting, maximizing, it's all very uh, wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny. But yeah, so um, yeah, so you you uses your option, limits mm -hmm. their options. I mean, that was a good example of what I was trying to put in there. Yeah, it's just a very basic strategy. Hey, look, it's the local uh, local flaw saying it's his first time again. Oh hey, uh, I hope to see you at a tournament sometime, flaw. <laughs> you you played like a brand new Katarina player, from what I hear. <laughs> Yeah, all right, but yeah, so, um, all right, so after we you know, go go on to limiting your opponent's options, um, you know, a good decision also doesn't necessarily need to hit, um, like, you know, hit them when they're not, or they're not blocking or mm -hmm. why not, um, um, or, um, you could even, uh, like, you could be, uh, using, um, Using moves or actions um, to let your opponent know. Warn them. Stay away. Yeah, like like if you're doing your keep up move, clicking them. Don't you're telling them, you know, don't come in, or otherwise you might get hit with the keep up. Move. Yeah. Forcing them to turtle, look for the whiff punish, and then you can mix them up, rush them down, you know, throw them when they're looking for a whiff. Right, so, so even though whiffing is generally a terrible decision, it can be used as a part of a strategy, but it's risky. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of things, everything's risky in this game. So, um, yeah, so oftentimes you can your, um, use your decisions to, to tell your opponent information you want them to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like, um, yeah, but, and that is also another thing is that, because that way you can set up your opponent um, uh, with with some of these uh, with your decisions to set them up for uh, a later a later setup. Like one of the things that I sometimes do with Nina, she's got her magic four which launches um, okay. on counter hit, um, but um, she also has a string afterwards. Which she's got like four, three, four, three, two. So if I've been whiffing the four a lot. Um, and they, they can tell they're trying to whip punish it. I might just do the four three two, because if the low hits on counter hit, I get a launch. So on that one, I was using whip to set them up. What's well, counter hit launcher into a counter hit launcher into a normal hit launcher yeah. string? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> eleven frames, not bad. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's one example of setting up your opponent for something later. Mm -hmm. Um. Risky though, because if I don't go in for the whip punish, she's just gonna look like an idiot doing moves all the way over there and gonna get whip punished. Right. Um, but in that case, it would have been a bad decision. Yeah, it's, it's a bad decision, <laughs> even though it's the same decision, just a bad time to do it. Right. Or I overestimated your want to, mm -hmm. to whip punish it or your reaction. That's the worst decision. When you hit someone with six lows in a row and you go, he's gonna duck this time, and they don't duck, and you go, what are you, some kind of idiot? Not ducking for my mids. That's the worst feeling. <laughs> when you overestimate. Alright, but yeah, so anyways, um, also, if you've got guaranteed punishes, um, those are almost always a good decision. Yeah, I saw that in the outline and I was trying to think, when's that bad? And the only time 
that came to mind is if like your Oscar and your 10 frame punish is just like jab. You're like, maybe you could go for a throw or a mix up or something else. It's, you know, a, a better mix up than the, you know, one four or one three, whatever mix up. But that's in general, almost all the time, a guaranteed punish is the way to go. All right, so DT flip tasks, doing the same thing over and over again is a mix up, right? Yeah, so, the no mix up mix up. <laughs> well, if you never establish that there is a mix up beforehand, then that's not a mix up. I guess, well, I mean, you, you can also just, if your opponent knows right. that you're, you know, if, if, you're, if your opponent has no knowledge of the idea of lows and will never duck because they're unaware of that concept, then the no mix-up mix-up with mids is not a mix-up. Eventually, if you do enough forward forward, people are going to duck. <laughs> they're going to duck one. That's what my instinct tells me. Well, I asks, how do I deal with you having a character crisis? Play Eddie. Yeah, play Eddie, loser. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. If you're under the shame requirement to play Eddie, then play Eddie. Yeah, um, yeah but so um, when getting, um, when doing punishes, there's oftentimes, and we, we can talk about that more later, but that's kind of a, a long topic, character crisis topic. I think we should but, do a video on it. Um, It'd be a short video. It's too short to put into like its own thing. Maybe we'll do a grab bag video. Miscellaneous, like seven short topics or something. Character crisis, you know. That's a good idea. A grab bag talk. All right, but yeah, so anyways, um, there is a time where uh, you can do a punish, um, but the, the max damage punish um, might end up putting them in a situation that is safer for them. Like, you know, they might be, uh, that might be for um, plus on like after the punish or or it might put them into rage back in the the tekken six days you might want to do a smaller punish not to put them into rage so you don't have to worry about that right but if you have a punish that's that will kill oh yeah do that do because it. um that's what you're trying to go for um to do it um sometimes there is a uh, you can do a trade-off between the max damage and position uh, meaning, like, you can knock them down, force them into a wake-up mix-up, mm -hmm. um, instead of doing a more, uh, more punishing yeah. um, punisher that leaves them standing, but kind of in neutral. Yeah, the Mishimas are a good example of that. They got the 1-1-2, which deals less damage but knocks down, and then they got the 1-2-2, which deals more damage but leaves them standing or in front of you, so. And then they've got the 2-2, which is even more damage, but it's minus on But hit. it's negative on hit, yeah, so, positive, does not it? Got to but yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so, uh, that's gonna be one of those things where you're just gonna have to decide um, which way is best for you based on the situation. Mm -hmm. If you've got a good wake-up mix-up, it might be a good idea to go for the wake-up mix-up. Uh, if not, then maybe not. Um, but also, um, sometimes different uh, punishers can change the positioning. Um, like some moves will knock them down to the right or to the left. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to get them close to a wall, might be able to do a different uh, different punisher to move a different way. Um, yeah. If you're, yeah. if you're trying to pick up on things like that, that's definitely where I suggest watching Koreans and Japanese extremely good players play. You'll see them do weird moves sometimes that you that aren't part of their like most basic kit, and they're usually for purposes like that, like oh, it knocks them close to the wall or puts them in a you know spikes them so he can't tech roll, and then a single mix up would have killed him. So that's definitely a lot of people say watch Koreans for everything, but. I only use it to pick up on things that I haven't, you know, haven't even thought of before. Blast, will we ever get shirt skin? Uh, yes. Yeah, sometime. Sometime. <laughs> Maybe if you were around for the last two. Alright. Anyways, do uh, you have anything else on what makes a good decision? No, like I said, it all, it's such a crazy... It just, it, it comes down to whether, if you, if basically, if you knew it was going to hit, or you had a really good idea that it was going to hit, and it hit them, then pat yourself on the back. All right. Um, so anyways, moving on to what makes a bad decision. Um, so, uh, the flip side of making a decision in time is making a decision too late. Hmm. 
Uh, hey, Marianne, are you in the Facebook group? Because um, if you are, then potentially do a, when we do them. If not, then unlikely. Yeah, because I usually only post up in the Facebook group. Okay. Um, but yeah, so anyways. Um, if not, I'll add you. Oh, yeah. I, I have a moment. Or is he in? Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah, so pay attention to that. and We'll post up on the group when we do a shirt run. Yeah, and it'll probably be a bunch of spam about it too, because I want to sell as many as I do when I do them, because it's kind of a pain to do. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, another thing that makes a bad decision is not changing up your decisions based upon what your opponent is doing. Um, so, like, if um, if your opponent is blocking and punishing your launchers consistently... Stop it. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Get some help. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. I definitely... I used to do one back two, down back two. Every time, and every time Colton would block it and slaughter fist me, and I'd say, what an idiot, why would I do that again? And it just took a hundred slaughter fists before I stopped doing it. Okay, um, at least mixed it up with something else. Okay, or if they're constantly sidestepping you, or making you whip, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, if they do it once, then, then they made a good decision. Yeah. If they're doing it... Ten times, then you're, you're making, making bad, bad decisions. decisions. Yeah, you're giving it to them. This, that is definitely one aspect where playing a good player, especially one that's defensively minded, a good player, will uh, will make you better in this area. You will stop making bad decisions very quickly because they will destroy you every time you make that bad decision. You know, like I'm using Colton as an example. He will find the max punish for something as simple as doing a down forward one one too many times. He'll get you. So. Playing, uh, you know, if you're playing someone that's just mixing you up a lot and that's how they're good, then then you're getting better at that, but not necessarily your offensive decision making. Playing very good defensive players will improve your offensive decision making. Right. So, um, yeah. So, um, when you're trying to change up um, what you're doing, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do different moves. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can change. Like one thing that that really throws off a lot of people is when you like delay your lows for like two frames. Because mm -hmm. people have a idea for your low timing, and they say, "Oh, he's not doing it," and then they'll stand up and get hit, and that's frustrating. Yeah. Or I mean, even your mids or whatnot. Because, yeah. Like if you uh, like like do a quick duck and then a mid or something like that, just do um, you know, change up what you're doing when you're doing yeah. it. Change up their expectation of the situation and then make them have to re-decide what to do. And in that in moment of indecision, you can usually get them with something. So Mariana says he likes my devil gin last stream. Uh, well, what? I'm not, Mariana says he likes my devil gin. I'm learning fast. Um, I actually like played gin back in Tekken 3, which is where I first learned them. So, and I've been kind of playing him off yeah. and on ever since, except for Tekken 4. Um, so it's not that I've learned him fast, it's just that I've kind of kept him... Kept him on the back burner? Yeah. I'm yeah, a... he's always been like your number two backup character or something. Uh, no, number four. Oh, number yeah. four backup character. They, yeah. He's like my number four backup character. <laughs> How crazy is that? Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so on top of trying uh, to change your timing of your moves, you can try just doing movement instead. Mm -hmm. um, movement is al almost always a good option. Yeah, because like I said, by changing the timing or changing your option, even if you're doing the same thing just a little bit later, you're causing a moment of hesitation or indecision in your opponent, and they might change their decision from the correct one to an incorrect one. All right. Um, throws are also a really good way of... Um, of uh, dealing with someone that is blocking all your stuff. Um, I know a lot of people kind of shun throws, but um, don't. Yeah, you'll get some hate mail <laughs> if you're if you're throwing people online a lot. But I I learned about throws I because I drove down to Strong Style uh, 18 years ago, however long ago it was, and uh, I was really nervous for my first tournament match. And I said, Oh, what if he just doesn't break throws? And that's when it dawned on me, like, if you're going to take this game seriously 
and you can win a match just by throwing, of course just throw the guy, just do it. You know, throw him until he's dead or until he adjusts to it. And uh, that's the kind of, you know, like killer instinct you need to have. So if someone sends you hate messages about throwing too much, disregard that. That's their, that's their problem, their failure to learn, to adapt, to get good. Right, and throws in this game are too bad to break. Yeah, and in this game, if you're complaining about throws, you're, I mean, you're either very new or just like a scrub. So, um, but yeah, and also you can always try to try doing different moves mm. in the same situation. Sometimes that will work too. Yeah, a actually doing a move mix up, not just a timing mix up or a, you know, something like that. Right, so another thing that makes a bad decision is uh, something that has very little chance of success. Um, <laughs> like Jack's 4 4 3 plus. <laughs> it's coming back. I love that move, but it's not a good idea. It's the dive. Yeah. Right? Oh man, that, Jesse did that to me once and I survived it. Oh, I bet he did. And so, while I was getting up, I didn't mean it's unblockable. Oh no. And it just whiffed. Because <laughs> he stands up and gets back, huh? No, because it, it, it was, got off axis somehow. I don't know what happened, but yeah, anyways. Ooh, um, but yeah, but, um, yeah, so, um, by not, not being a success, I don't mean that it, that it will be blocked, because oftentimes when someone blocks a move, um, then, uh, then you know, you're still doing, but you can still maintain pressure, especially if you feel, you know, maybe minus four or better. Or if it's a move that's plus on block, you know, if someone blocks, so you're running three, you could say that's a success because that's part of the, you know, risk of that move. You could get floated, blah, blah, blah. But the reward is even if they block it, you're still uh, in a positive position. Miguel's unblockable is always good. I don't know what what's Miguel's unblockable. The one hit KO punch. Oh, the one where he like walks up and laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not a good idea. I saw something nonsensical. I forgot it was against Heihachi. And uh, Miguel's laughing, and he's actually moving a little bit while he's laughing. And Heihachi did something, and he ended up like. Doing the dual fang, he crossed through him, and yeah. Miguel did the 180 unblockable, <laughs> killed him. And I said, wow. <laughs> this game is stupid. I, he did like, I forget what he did, but it, was, it must have been a low or a hell sweep or something. He went for a hell sweep and like, went through him because Miguel's walking forward like unstoppably. And so they he crossed through him and then naturally Miguel did the punch and of course it tracks 180 degrees, just bopped him on the back and killed him in one hit. And okay. you see you see so many clips like that of just like I'm glad that didn't happen to me. Life changing, horrible things. Well, but back in tag two when uh, Miguel could do that unblockable startup uh in tag game for a mm -hmm. safe uh, for a safe that's, tag game. That's how it got started, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Miguel tags in and starts laughing at him. Yeah, so uh, with, with... It was it was it was Hihachi's unblockable. Rajin 1 plus 2. Oh, yeah. And he, they both, because he like runs to start the unblockable and Miguel's moving forward, they both ran at each other and, and Heihachi went all the way to the other side of him. And then Miguel turns around, boom! Which is, I mean, Rajin 1 plus 2 is the, totally the correct decision, an unblockable launcher. But he, they just went through each other. Sure. Oh my god. Ugh. Yeah, um, I would do Nina's unblockable because it's a launcher. Yeah. And exactly. I never had that problem. But yeah, so um, anyways, getting back to this decision to have very little chance of success. Um, so you, if you're blocking, if they're blocking your attacks, that means they're not attacking. Um, so if they're not attacking, that means Wait, they're what? not if No, they're, if, if they're blocking your attacks, they are not attacking. Yeah. Yeah, I think you. Okay. Or I got it back. Um, right, so... Um, yeah, so that doesn't necessarily just because a move got blocked doesn't mean that it's mm -hmm. not a good a good thing for you. Yeah, pressuring lockdown that's a good strategy, and you may be implementing that strategy effectively uh, even if they're blocking your moves. Right. Um, yeah, but if you're throwing out like punishable launchers when all they're doing is holding back, um, yeah, that's that's a bad decision. Um, also, just whiffing moves at range for no reason be a bad decision unless you're setting them up you said before. yeah like we mentioned earlier magic four you can like Kevin does this all the time you know like with a jab and then a forward two you know to catch you 
trying to punish him or coming in or reacting to the fact that he whiffed. You go, oh, now's my chance to play, and then you got counter hit and you're mad. The setup, you know, so sometimes a fast whiff can be a setup. All right, um, yeah, so, and then another, um, another, uh, hallmark of a bad decision is if, uh, um, if your decision doesn't limit their option. Um, so if you're doing, um, doing a move that just, it doesn't stop them from doing what they were going to do, um, like, for, um, like my example in the outline is if, uh, you're in high plus frames, like you've got Dragonoff's back one plus two that big Blizzard hammer. Blizzard hammer that is plus five on block or something like that. Uh, if Dragonoff just jabs afterwards. Yeah, that's kind of a waste of plus frames. Yeah, because you can get it, do a down forward one, they still can't step it. Yeah. Um, but they would be able to duck a high. So if you're not, if you're not, yeah, if you don't want yeah. Actually, with dragging off one two one is a string that's a counter hit like boss plant, so that could be a good idea. But but just a one. Yeah, just like a, a single jab or two one, you know, is like actual poking jab string. Yeah, th yeah. There's definitely a wasted potential there. Right. So that would be a bad decision. Those those ones aren't as common yeah. just because pretty much everything you can do will limit their option. But a yeah, suboptimal decision. For sure. Um. Yeah, so anyways, there's um, an, another interesting topic that which touches on some of the other things we were talking about. Oh, let me, uh, sorry, let me run it back oh. a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, you know, Nick, Nick has a little bit of this problem where it's like, he'll have a read that I'm going to duck and then he'll just do like a down forward one, just like a single, it's like, it's like do a big fat mid, it's cause, especially because he plays Dragonov, who's got a, a handful of really good safe mids that lose to like moving. But he's got the read I'm gonna duck, so then just like hitting me with like a really light poke is a little underwhelming when you've got even more buff safe mids that it just it's like a it's like a loss of potential damage doing something that's too light when you have the read, you know? Okay. If you think he's gonna duck and you're not hundred percent sure, but you got a big safe mid blizzard hammer that's gonna smash my brains in, you know, do that instead of just a down forward four, you know, eight damage leg poke. Or um, even with Dragon up up forward floor, is that also yeah. is that um, tracks one way, yeah. track one way, crushes lows, and you get a follow up afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's a good point on that. Yeah, I was yeah, Nick definitely something I've told him, and Nick knows too to to work on that. He'll do down two and down two and have a mix up that you're gonna duck, and then he'll just like do something tiny mid, you know. It's like, no, you got to punish him for ducking, you know, the best way you can and don't necessarily do something negative 18, you know, it's not that, you know, worth it. Usually things that are negative 18 have some kind of other purpose for it than they were just ducking. But yeah, under, under reading your opponent, I guess, is the, you're under utilizing your read. Yeah, so anyways, then um, we're going to talk a bit about, because uh, there is a trade-off between making making a good decision for right now versus a good decision for later. Um, and this one's kind of a, a, a tricky subject because it involves um, setting your opponent up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're playing one game online, <laughs> there's not a lot of that. Right, um, but you know, you can, you can, one of the things you can be doing is setting them up with a mix up, like, you, like, um, like DT Flip was asking earlier, if you do the same thing over and over again, is it a mix-up? Well, it could be if you set them up for it. So you set them up, let them know what the mix-up is, um, and then you just hit them with one part of that <laughs> mix-up over and over again. Hopefully the safe part. <laughs> do the safe part of the mix-up over and over and over again. Right, but that, yeah, it's called the no mix-up mix-up. It's cause a classic I'm, term. Yeah, oftentimes people will expect to be mixed up because they know the mix-up exists. Um, but um, but they'll keep on, so they'll keep on thinking you're going to make the other, other decision, but you keep, but they, yeah, I mean, you, you see, know. you see people get hit by the same low six times in a row. And that's because every time, you know, you get hit with one low, you're just kind of like, whatever you get hit with two lows and you're like, okay, he just did two lows. There's no way he's going to hit me with another low and you pick him again, do another low. And they say, okay, three lows, no way he's going to do four, you know, and you just got to have the, the moxie. To hit him with six launch punishable down back twos in a row. 
We just got to develop that confidence. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but also I guess we should define it, but a, a good decision now is something that will likely get you, get you rewarded with a damage or position right now, but it doesn't necessarily set up the opponent for damage later. Mm. Um, a good decision is for later is when you set them up for big damage later. Um, but yeah, but also, it can also be that they will do and block accordingly. Mm. Like, if I, like if I'm at a big life lead, uh, and I can survive, like, someone blocking a, a launch punishable low, like a Hell Sweeper or a down back two. I'll do that Hell Sweeper down back two if it would kill them for not blocking it, because that'll make them really want to duck, because they got killed for blocking it. And then if they block it and punish me and I survive, that'll also make them want to duck more in the future. And then I just kind of have to gamble that I win the round anyways, right? But but that's like an example of a setup. Like I'm gonna do a down back two in this situation where he knows it might come, and if he doesn't block it, he's gonna go, ah, oh, I should duck more because I just got murdered by down back two. And then if he blocks it and launch punishes me and deals damage, then he goes, hey, I should duck more because I get to launch punishes down back twos and make comebacks or almost make comebacks, you know? Right. So that's like a, a where you could say doing a down back two is a stupid decision. Uh, I may be setting up something for later, you know? I just realized we're probably not going to have much actual game on this discussion. Yeah, there's not many, like, uh, I'm, I'm not even... Uh, yeah, I just... Yeah, that's right. a good one. It's just, we just need the, the sweet, sweet Infinite Azure music. Yeah, anyways, um... How, how are we going to demonstrate our thought? We, you want to have, like, uh, thought bubbles come out of our head while we're playing? <laughs> Yes. No cheating. No looking at my bubble. Yeah, so anyway, do you have anything else on the uh, this pillars of fundamentals? You know, yeah, this is, this is kind of the... I mean, we talked about... We're going to talk about how to practice like your execution later. And your decision-making... How to improve your decision-making. You just have to be thinking about decision-making. A big problem with me for a long time was I just kind of played on autopilot and assumed that I would be getting better. But I really kind of plateaued. And you need to be thinking about what you're trying to improve when you play and and when you're playing your little brother you know that's like a good opportunity or when you're playing online or you're playing uh grubs and casuals you know like really either play a different character helps you work on your decision making because you don't have like the muscle memory and the habits to rely on or uh just like really thinking okay i'm going to sidestep electric something how do i set him up for a sidestep electric so, I mean, that's uh, really all I have to say about the fundamentals and, and the knowledge. You just. Pillars. The pillars, yeah, the pillars. Pillars of the fundamentals. Right. Uh, and then, as far as game knowledge goes, you just gotta ask people who know. Or do research on your own. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of information out there just getting. sifting through it all. Um, Alright, but, anyways, now that we've talked about pillars, we've got. The actual fundamentals. The actual fundamentals. Right. And I've actually talked about all of these in the previous ones. Um, so this one is kind of going to, uh, we're going to tie them all together-ish. 